Hey guys, Coach Corsi here. We are going to continue with John Wooden and his uh, days growing up in Indiana. And we're going to talk about his high school basketball years today and with Martinsville High School. So I hope you guys enjoy this. It's pretty cool. Go Bearcats. Hey guys, here we go. John Wooden, high school years, city of Martinsville, city of mineral water. Okay, so they need moved to Martinsville, John Wooden's sophomore year, because as you know, I've talked about his dad lost the farm, he lost everything. So his dad had to find work. There was a lot of work in Martinsville because it was a uh, because of this mineral water and these springs, it was a destination. They had these hotels and spas and all these different things. And so people came from all over the United States and from Europe, all over the world to Martinsville to relax and enjoy these healing springs. So his dad could find work there it was great. And so that's where they went. So his sophomore year, he went to Martinsville. They were called the artisans of Martinsville. And he went there to play for the legendary coach, Glenn Curtis. So if you don't know about Indiana State basketball, then just uh, just go watch uh, Hoosiers and you'll understand. It's uh, John Wooden said it was, it was more wild and crazy than even the NC2A Final Four. In fact, they had a beautiful brick gym in the city of Martinsville that sat 5,520 people and that was 300 more people than they had in the whole city crazy right so Glenn Curtis was quite a legend they called him the old fox and most coaches had not won even one state championship and he already won two in his career so he was quite legendary even even before John Wooden got there so 1926, John Wooden got there. And one thing about Coach Glenn Curtis is that he really stressed fundamentals to the point that John Wooden, Wooden said they probably spent more time without the basketball than with the basketball. So he was really a coach of detail and, and that's, what, that's what really made him special. Indiana is just completely crazy about basketball. Completely crazy. Even back in 1926, they were crazy. Uh, one other thing you got to know about Coach Curtis is that he used poetry to motivate his players. So I'm going to read you this one poem that you maybe heard before I had that really is cool. And here it is. I want to read it. So, sorry I'm looking down. For when the one great scorer comes to write against your name, he writes not that you won or lost, but how you played the game. And he and he actually, John Wood said he, he used a lot of poetry to motivate his players. So let's go to 1926, the Indiana State High School Championships. Back then, there was only one division. Didn't matter the size of your school. One division. Here in California, we have five, six, seven divisions. No, one division. 779 teams were eligible. Think about that. 717 teams participated. And if you were lucky enough to get to the last weekend, you had to play three games in one day and then another game on the next day to win in the final weekend to win the Indiana State Championship. So they were lucky enough to get there in front of every game in the final weekend, there was 15,000 plus fans. What a high school, crazy. So they got there and John Wooden says the first year they were there, it was just a blur. And all he remembers was this guy, Charlie Stretch Murphy.
He said, the guy was six foot eight. He looked like a water tower. And because of him, they couldn't win. They lost by seven. And that was his sophomore year. And he goes to his junior year, and they're lucky enough, again, to make it back to the final game. Crazy, right? Two years in a row. And they play Muncie Central. And they had a great game. And they ended up beating them. They beat them by three. 26-23. Now, the scores were very low back then, he said, because you're not going to believe this, but after each score, they had to go to half court and jump, do a jump ball after every score. So he said because of that, the scores were, were really low. And they ended up winning by three, beating Muncie Central by three. So in 1928, third straight year in a row, they make it back to the final game again. Three straight years, and they're favored to win, to, to go uh, to repeat and win. And they're up by one with a few seconds to go. And one of the players from Muncie Central comes to half court at the buzzer and throws an underhand, not overhand, an underhand shot from half court that John Wooden says it went all the way to the top of the rafters and came down and won in the hoop. And they lost the game. He says to this day, He's never seen a shot like that. He never saw a shot like that, coaching, playing his entire career. It was an impossible shot, he calls it. And it went in. And, of course, they were extremely de dejected and not, not happy in the locker room. They've won one out of three. But they've made it there three straight times with 700-plus teams competing to get to that final game. They made it there three years in a row which is really uh, quite amazing just in itself. His dad said something to him again that he'd heard before, and I want to read it to you, that really encouraged John Wooden, and he hung on to this the rest of his life. He said that even recalling this story again, even telling this story is really tough for him to even talk about it his entire life. That's how much this game impacted him. And if you've ever lost a playoff game or your final game on a buzzer beater like I have, I understand the feeling. you never forget it. Never forget it. And it doesn't happen to all of us because it doesn't happen that much. But it can happen. So his dad spoke to him after that game. And he told him this again, which he told him before. But he reminded him this. You lose, you feel bad. Sometimes very, very bad. But a much worse feeling is knowing you haven't done everything you possibly could have done to prepare and compete. Let me read that one more time. You, you feel bad, sometimes very, very bad. But a much worse feeling is knowing you haven't done everything you could possibly could have done to prepare and compete. His dad said, son, you did everything you could to prepare and compete. It didn't work out the way you wanted to. And that's just that's just life. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But you prepare, you compete, you work hard, you get after it. You do everything you can in your power. Control what you can control. And at the end of the day, if you don't win, then you, you just move on. One thing is I always tell my players when they miss a shot or a, play, or, or a turnover, they have a turnover or they lose a game, they have a bad practice. I always say the word next, 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 next game, next shot, next play, next practice, next workout. Can't live in the past. Can't let the past control your present. You can't let the past control your future. In business, I had the opportunity to win at probably more brands than most people in the footwear and apparel industry ever have. But I also had a lot of losses. I had things that didn't work out, brands that didn't go well. Bad situations, terrible people that I, that I worked for. But I kept pushing, prepare, compete, 
and and have a positive attitude and you just move on because god says for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plan for you to prosper and not to harm you plan to give you hope and a future that's our destiny and as long as you stay positive you keep working hard you prepare and compete and you keep praying you keep praying for god to give you wisdom and knowledge for god to open those doors good things are going to happen so i want to encourage you that way i love this story about john wooden it's just great life lessons for all of us and and just keep going on because whatever the mind can conceive and you dare to believe with god's help you can achieve go bear cats Hey guys, Coach Corsi here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and thanks for being a part of this vision for the future to impact our youth and the next generation. God bless you and go Bearcats.